Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another Anthem Breakdown. Today we are going to discuss about an anthem which has been through some recent debate about its existence among the citizens of its country. Mer Hyrenic, or Our Fatherland, the national anthem of Armenia, is an anthem which may seem like a simple tune to the average ear, but with the well poetic imagery in its lyrics, this anthem can inspire to weave the fabric of patriotism for every Armenian around the world. I'm Alexander from Sounding Smart, and this is Mer Hyrenic, the national anthem of Armenia. To begin the history of Armenia's national anthem, we have to begin in the 1900s. If this leaves out the Hamidian massacres before that, the Russo-Persian wars before that, the Kingdom of Armenia before that, and supposedly Noah's Ark before that, then so be it. The outbreak of World War I in 1914 split the world into two warring factions. The Central Powers, which included Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, and the Allies, which included Serbia, Russia, France, Belgium, Montenegro, and Great Britain. See, Armenia was split in two. Eastern Armenia was with the Russian Empire, while Western Armenia was ruled under the Ottoman Empire. The government in Istanbul began to look on the Armenians with distrust and suspicion, because the Imperial Russian Army held a large amount of Armenian volunteers. In April 1915, Armenian intellectuals would be arrested by Ottoman authorities, and with the Tijer law passed on May 29th, a large proportion of Armenians living in Anatolia perished in what would become known as the Armenian Genocide. A horrific act of ethnic cleansing in which hundreds of thousands of Armenians were driven from their homes, massacred, or marched until they died. The death toll of Armenians in Ottoman Turkey during this period has been estimated up to 1.5 million. Tens of thousands emigrated to Russia, Lebanon, Syria, France, and the United States. And the western part of the historical homeland of the Armenian people was emptied of Armenians. In 1916, Armenian regions of the Ottoman Empire fell to the Russian army. But in March 1918, Soviet Russia, led by Vladimir Lenin having seceded Russia after the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II, was forced via treaty to cede all of Ottoman Armenia and part of Russian Armenia to the now dilapidated Ottoman Empire though some Armenians continue to hold out against the advancing Ottomans. On April 22nd, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan would form the Transcaucasian Federal Republic. But within a month, their basic diversity soon caused them to split into separate republics. Armenia would declare independence on May 28, 1918, as the Republic of Armenia led by Aram Manukyan, the first independent Armenian state since the Middle Ages. Upon its creation, the government would naturally recognize Mer Hyrenik as the national anthem. The lyrics talk about the worthiness of dying for the freedom of Armenia under a proud and strong symbolic tricolored flag. The Republic of Armenia, along with its anthem, wouldn't last long. In 1920, Turkish nationalist forces invaded the fledgling Armenian Republic from the east. After the Treaty of Alexandropol was initiated in December of that year, the violent conflict would force Armenia to disarm a majority of its military forces. The Republic of Armenia would collapse with its anthem after the Soviet army invaded Armenia around the same time. Armenia would be annexed by the Red Army along with Georgia and Azerbaijan in 1922, and in 1936, they would become separate Union Republics of the Soviet Union. Mer Hyrenik would be considered a protest song against Soviet rule, all allowed to be replaced in 1944 with the adopted state anthem of the Armenian SSR, arranged by Aram Khachaturian. Soviet rule in Armenia was a period of relative security from its hostile neighbors, along with great economic development and of cultural and educational achievements. But full expression of Armenian national and ethnic pride was impossible under the imposed Stalin regime. The Soviet Union would eventually begin to crumble and fall after 71 years, and in the late 20th century, a series of Armenian national movements grew. It wouldn't be long until Armenia declared its sovereignty on August 23, 1990. In July 1, 1991, Mer Hyrenik would be reinstated as Armenia's national anthem. Following independence, Armenia's constitution would be established in 1995 with Mer Hyrenik as the national anthem. Located in Chapter 1, Article 13 along with the flag, the coat of arms, and the capital. The constitution would have amendments ratified in 2005, allowing the anthem to have its residents questioned for Armenia in the 21st century. There was a debate whether to keep Mar Hyrenik as the national anthem or change it to the former Soviet-era hymn it once had but with a change of lyrics getting rid of the communist imagery. The reason for the purpose of the change was the former anthem being very inspirational and encouraging. 
In 2006, the National Assembly went ahead and put it to a vote, passing the deadline on December 25th, 2006, by a vote of 71 to 6 and another 6 abstentions. Mayor Hyrenik would stay as the provisional anthem of Armenia under law number ZR-252. Under law ZR-252, execution and respect of the anthem amongst the citizens of Armenia is discussed in detail. Some of these etiquettes include performing the anthem when raising the flag during ceremonies every Monday before lessons in schools and when there are public holidays and historical events. Radio and television companies play the anthem before and after broadcastings, usually around 6 in the morning to midnight, and the anthem is performed on New Year's Eve. You must stand unless you are physically unable to do so. You have the option to put your hand over your heart, face the flag, or the performer of the anthem. You can sing along to the anthem, Military personnel must salute and men must remove their hats during the playing of the anthem. The ladies generally don't have to. Headdress protocol has been a centuries old tradition which usually has had a large amount of leniency in today's times. Mer Hyrenik is an 8 bar light motif with a rhythmic pattern that repeats in almost every measure. You have a dotted quarter followed by an eighth and ending in two quarters. You'll notice it changes to two quarters and a half note on the fourth and eighth bar when it goes to a half cadence or an authentic cadence when the entire second half of the light motif is repeated. And all this is a melody with your basic western musical imprints. There's no way this can be the end of my score analysis. So I decided to do some research and began digging into the origins of the tune. And thankfully, I had big help along the way. While researching, I ran into journalist Haik Nahapetian. He wrote an article from the Armenian Mirror Spectator called Questioning for the Origins of Mer Hyrenik. The lyrics were first written as a poem called The Song of the Italian Girl by Mikhail Nalbandian. Armenian poet Mikhail Nalbandian wrote this poem of Italian girl in the middle of 19th century when Italy was actually fighting for its liberation from foreign, uh, particularly Austrian oppression. Uh, this famous rebellion led by Giuseppe Garibaldi and uh, Nalbandian visited Italy uh, after which he started writing the poem which he finished later in, in Western Europe, in Germany. The composer of the score is recognized as Barsek Kanachian and an Armenian composer Christopor Karamursa would have it arranged. On March 15 of 1885 in Artsuni Theatre of Tiflis back then a part of Russian Empire, now it's Tbilisi, the capital of the country of Georgia. Uh, at Arzuni Armenian Theatre, uh, during the opening part of a, of a concert, Mer Hyrenik was played. This is on record and the flyer uh, exists of that concert. Um, the concert was arranged by Armenian musician composer uh, Christopher or Khachadur Karamurza, originally from uh, Crimea. But Karamurza never credited himself for uh, composing uh, the musical tune, the melody of Maid Hadenik. Well, of course he didn't credit himself. It was written by... Wait a minute. Is that possible? A composer doesn't write a melody one month before his birth. Uh, Barsek Kanachan is often credited for composing the melody of Maid Hydenik, but to the best of my knowledge, Kanachan himself never said he uh, did compose uh, that uh, melody. Uh, uh, he was the famous composer of the Republic of Armenia when Armenia was independent between 1918 and 1920. Uh, and he was the one to rearrange uh, the music, he was the one to do the job. Uh, after Armenia uh, ceased to be independent in 1920, he left Armenia, he lived outside Armenia, and uh, during various community events and, and functions, he would uh, perform and stage uh, Med Hydenik, and that's how he became known as a composer uh, of Med Hydenik, but Kanachian uh, did not really claim the authorship of the, of the melody. Karam Mursa would often credit his compositions, which applied to Pondrin by Nalbandian, but never specifically credited himself for Mer Hyrenik. 
So we still don't know who wrote the music to this day. Now, Petrian suggests taking a look back at Italy where the lyrics were written. Historically, there have been uh, Armenian schools, uh, also some kind of research institutions, we can say, in Italy. One of those institutions continues to function today, the Mkhitaryist Armenian Catholic School. And so um, I, I assume that very logically, they could have learned about the poem written by Nalbandian and dedicated to Italy because those uh, schools, they had their chapters in Armenia, in the Caucasus, in the Territorial Republic of Armenia, modern day, near the village of Panik, there was a school affiliated with Italy's Catholic Armenian schools and also within, within Georgia, modern day Georgia, there also um, similar schools existed and also in Crimea, so certain uh, level of interaction definitely existed and they could have learned about this poem related to Italy called a, a song of Italian girl and logically they could have been interested and could have worked on adjusting the tune and converting it into a song. Uh, we know that those schools they had their musical classes and their orchestras most probably they would never even imagine that this would eventually uh, turn into the anthem of the independent republic of Armenia but this is how uh, uh, things developed eventually. People loved this song, the song of Italian girl. It became kind of the symbol of Armenia's liberation and quite naturally it became the anthem of Armenia. Mer Hyrenik would be performed in battles, movements and celebrations among Armenians through the years to the point where they made it a folk song that was just a part of their own identity. The spread of the melody reached as far as Russia and had gone so far as to web itself in classical compositions. This was very common and you do find examples of this happening with melodies that were once folk songs being incorporated into classical works. Now, this was not uncommon at all for the classical composers of the 19th century, 20th century to benefit from um, the folk music and kind of to blend it within their classical uh, work, classical musical works. Uh, ordinary people may not know this but they know this uh, and, and this is not uh, this is something that happens every now and then and I have seen letters, uh, communication between different classical composers in which they actually refer uh, to this kind of activity. The melody for Hatikva, Israel's current national anthem for example, can be heard in Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's eighth of his twelve variations on A Vu de Raja Maman, Kavir 265. In the case of Mer Hyrenik's melody, you can hear it very briefly in a ballet called Raymonda written by Russian composer Alexander Glazunov. Russia was creating its identity in the music world in the 19th century with the Russian Five, which consisted of composers Cesar Kui, Alexander Borodin, Mili Balakirov, Modest Mussorgsky, and Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov, the flight of the bumblebee guy. They mixed Russian Orientalism with popular French and Italian music composition techniques, as well as placing melodies from folk music into their work. Glazunov was no different. Alexander Glazunov was supposed to finish his ballet by late 1897, so he had about less than two years from start to finish. But at the same time, while he was working on this ballet, he was also working on his second symphony and two or three more other musical works. So he was really overwhelmed. And he had this contract with with uh, director of the Imperial Theatre of Russia, Ivan Sevolovsky, uh, which would uh, define the deadline. Okay, so. He was obviously overwhelmed and my theory is that uh, Mikhail Ippolitov Ivanov could have kind of helped his friend by passing him uh, notes that he brought with him for sure uh, from the Caucasus and part of the, those notes particularly were uh, Armenian uh, music, were Armenian folk uh, melodies. Glazunov was close friends with Russian composer Mikhail Ippolitov Ivanov who was a former student of Rimsky Korsakov living in the Caucasus regions in the 1890s and many prominent Armenian composers even took some of his classes. Mikhail Ippolitov Ivanov and uh, Alexander Glazunov, they were friends. Uh, Ippolitov Ivanov would refer to Glazunov, to Alexander Glazunov as uh, Petit Sasha because Sasha stands for Alexander in, in Russia. Logically, he could have tried to help his friend and kind of passed him uh, the notes that he brought with him 
uh, from, from the Caucasus. There were also other ways how Alexander Glazunov could have learned about Mediterranean. Possibly he could have learned about it from Alexander Spendarian or Spendiarov in Russia, an Armenian composer, or he could have been present at Armenian events, Armenian community functions, during which uh, this uh, Meir Hyrenik, uh, could have again been played. I've asked many Armenians on their thoughts of Meir Hyrenik being the anthem, and the results, well, they were extremely mixed. I can see why Meir Hyrenik is classified as a provisional anthem. Some say it's fine as it is, since it has stood with Armenian people through even the harshest of historical events. Meir Hyrenik is already very precious to our nation. Uh, Meir Hyrenik was played during the 1918 uh, famous uh, battle uh, in Sardarabad during 1915 self-defense battle in, uh, in the town of Van. Uh, and between 1991 and now, Meir Hyrenik has been our uh, national state anthem and there are many stories connected to Meir Hyrenik. So by the virtue of its background already, uh, Meir Hyrenik is very famous and dear to our heart. Others find it boring and mediocre. Heck, even some wish to go back to the Soviet Armenian anthem. I mean, who could blame him? Just listen to this. Maybe with different lyrics to not make it pro-communist. Russia's anthem is an example of this, but the argument does seem to be very valid. I mean, how often do you get an anthem arranged by the Aram Khachaturian? Aram Khachaturian is the most famous Armenian composer ever, of all time. Uh, Aram Khachaturian was a genius, and it's, it's, it's an iconic name, and it would be appropriate uh, to have Armenia's anthem uh, composed by Aram Khachaturian. Uh, I, I draw parallels, I say, imagine Austria's uh, anthem be composed by Mozart or Germany's anthem be composed by uh, Ludwig van Beethoven. Uh, this is a very iconic name, uh, part of our identity, one of the names that world recognizes among Armenian names. And so yes, it would be from that standpoint certainly appropriate to have Armenia's um, anthem uh, be composed by Khachaturian. Another important feature is that uh, Aram Khachaturian in reality did not really compose compose uh, the, the track. He rearranged an Armenian sharagan, an Armenian church music. Um, I wonder how he did this in 1940s during the period of Stalin's oppression and during the atheism in the USSR, but he did that. Uh, and you know that Armenians are the first Christian nation. So having an Armenian church music converted into our anthem by Khachaturian this is essential and, and this is uh, something to consider and, and to keep in mind. So we have to work with the situation and, and, and at some point find a solution between these two very precious anthems. So what do you think? Should Mir Hyrenik, a simple melodic heirloom that has stood with the Armenian people through some of their greatest struggles, continue to be the anthem? Or shall a new anthem with ethnic music from the region emerge to represent a new and strong Armenia for the world to hear in the 21st century? The only way to find out is to wait and listen. Here is Mehr Hyrenik, the national anthem of Armenia. <laughs>